hello it's happening i've been threatening to make this video for probably about six weeks and i keep putting it off because well i was going to record this for when i reached a thousand subscribers that was going to be like the milestone video and in the same time frame I'm now more than 6,000 subscribers and I'm a little afraid. <sighs> anyway, we're doing a Q&A. This is gonna be my first q and I've got a cup of tea and I've got a bit of cake because I feel like it's gonna be weird to just sit here and talk for a while without anything to do with my hands. Also, I just need to find my phone and read you guys some questions. So hello to everyone who's new here. I'm Steph, welcome to Steph. This is me. This is the channel where I do sewing and other things. There's a whole lot more of you here now and it's kind of freaking me out. I'm going to start with a question that I got from one of my recent subscribers. Their name is The Thrifty Fawn and they asked me a very thoughtful question. So let me just find it so that I can get the way that they asked it. Uh, the Thrifty Fawn asks, Hi Steph, your recent, your most recent video making a dress I can't afford is really blowing up. How are you doing in terms of processing all of the excitement related to this event? Thank you so much for this question, Fawn. Honestly, I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. You can see my eyes are kind of going a bit wild right now. It's been a lot to process. Honestly, I feel like that video is almost at 200,000 views, which is really, really, really crazy. Like you don't understand. <laughs> There's so many comments on that video. Majority of them are positive. Majority of them are positive, which is really great. But I guess you kind of hear about these things or you might have seen other YouTubers do Q&As where they say that it's hard to process that amount of information. And honestly, that has been the biggest surprise is that it's so hard to process that amount of information. We're not designed to take in that amount of information at once and going from having my videos have like maybe a couple of hundred views to having literally hundreds of thousands of views. It's wild. It's like, it's a, it's a massive adjustment. There's also the other factor that, oh, this is really good cake. The coconut cake, courtesy of my mum. I think it's from the shop, but it's really good. The other thing that I will freely admit is that you might follow some other YouTubers and they'll say, I'm not here for the views, I'm not here, I'm just here to like make videos and share my content and blah 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 blah. But I really feel like anyone who starts a channel, they're not thinking in the back of their mind like what happens if this blows up, what happens if I can make money out of YouTube. Everyone is thinking about that when they start a YouTube channel. If they're saying that they're not, they're probably lying to you or they're just like, they don't really understand what YouTube is. I feel like I was gonna make this Q&A for my when I hit a thousand subscribers and I wasn't expecting to have met the eligibility criteria for monetization, but now I have. And now I've made a couple hundred bucks from YouTube, which is so weird. And for the last couple of years as I've been making stuff on this channel and really the last year when I've been focusing on making stuff for this channel, I didn't really expect this to happen. And now that it has happened, I don't know how to feel. <sighs> There's probably a bit of like delayed processing that comes with being autistic and having that sort of stuff. You know, I, I just, I really, I honestly don't know how to feel. Um, I'm a little bit numb to it all, to be honest. It's kind of like you work towards a goal and you expect it's gonna make you feel a certain way, whether that be happy or otherwise. And then once you reach that point, it's kind of a bit of an anti-climax. And it honestly has me thinking about the reasons of why I wanna keep this channel going. Not that I'm, I'm not, not gonna keep making videos because I do really enjoy sharing this stuff with you. Sometimes when your hobby becomes a bit of a chore or a bit of a job, then, you know, it makes me think about, do I really actually wanna do this? Has my goal been to be monetized and make money from YouTube and make this into my life? I don't know, because I got a new job and I really love my new job. And what does that mean for this world? What does that mean for YouTube? I don't know. Anyway, thank you for the thank you for the very thoughtful question. Uh, I have been reflecting on it since you sent it, so thank you very much. Let me just adjust the lighting situation. The uh, the weather here in Sydney has been a little all over the shop, and hence I'm just like there was like sun beating into my eyes earlier, and now the clouds are back and it's raining again. So pff, what do you know? All right. I'm gonna move on to a couple other questions. These came via my Instagram. Uh, Yash, Yash Chopra, the famous Indian film director. Not really, he's just a guy with the same name. I don't know if that's gonna make sense to anyone who's not Indian, but he has ex the exact same name as this really famous film director in India, Yash Chopra. So, 
Hey Yash, thanks for always being my biggest supporter. This is crazy. We went to uni together and yeah, he's always watched all my videos and loves my channel and I, I really, I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. He asks, are you exploring slash trying anything new with reference to YouTube content? I think this kind of goes back to the first question. When he first sent this question through, I don't think I had any ideas about changing what I'm doing or trying anything new. I will say that while I love making sewing content, it is kind of hard to process everyone's opinions and feelings about the ways that I make certain things and like if I talk too much in a video like mm, okay. I don't want this channel to be a tutorial channel per se I really want it to be me sharing the things I make and then maybe throwing in a vlog here and there or something where I'm making something that's not sewing related maybe like more DIY sort of stuff so I'm really hoping that now that I'm in a new rhythm with my new job and that I have maybe a little bit of YouTube money to play with, I could start doing a couple of different kinds of projects that aren't just sewing. So I'm going to leave this link up available for you guys all the time if you ever want to send me a question. And it's the not gonna lie link. It means that you can send an anonymous question or an anonymous message, whatever you want to do. I cannot identify who sent it to me. I just get what the message is. And I have had a few sitting in my inbox here. You can see I've been waiting to record this video before I open these. I have no idea what some of these say. A few from quite a few weeks ago when I first put out the call for questions for this Q&A video. Someone just said, I love your style. Thank you very much. That's very sweet. And another person says, we've been friends for so long. I really like you. I have no idea who you are, but I'm sure I really like you too, which is why we've been friends for so long. And someone else asks, who was the last girl you texted? If we count all kinds of all forms of messaging, I think the last girl I texted was my friend Chloe on Instagram because we were talking about going to yoga together. Uh, someone says, my international crush. Thank you. That's very sweet wherever you are in the world. Someone else asks, because I just graduated from Master of Architecture, in case people were wondering, a lot of people asked me in the comments on my uh, graduation dress video what I graduated from. If you made it through the whole video, you would have seen that I graduated from a Master of Architecture. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let me put my hat on. It my hat. Yes, Master of Architecture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Someone asks, do you have any further academic plans? Look, I'm gonna say no. I'm very glad to not be studying anymore. Studying takes up so much time and brain space. Um, eventually, it would be cool to do more study. I think it would be fun to do a PhD one day. I'm still kind of figuring out what my area of study would be, what my area of research would be. Also, I feel like if I went back to uni right now, my husband would swiftly divorce me. And I do not want that to happen because I love him very much and we have a lovely life together. And I do not want to be single. Mm. See, the sun is back. Is it too bright? Can you see my eyes? Apologies if um, this lighting situation is just shit. I'm gonna open some random messages. I have no idea what these what these are gonna say. Let's just open one. This is from a month ago. How did you get started sewing? And what's the piece you're most proud of? I got started with sewing because my mum has sewn forever. Like I think she learned it in high school and maybe from her mum or maybe not. I don't remember how she started, but she started me. I remember for my, I think my like eighth or ninth birthday, I got like a toy sewing machine. I forgot that I had this until very recently. It was like blue and really small. And I remember sewing little bags and gifts for like my primary school friends. They were not very high quality at all. And it was kind of weird. I think I might've made something for my doll or Teddy. I can't remember. Um, but I really got started sewing when I was a teenager. My mum, she just said one day, hey, do you wanna learn? And I said, yeah, sure. Or maybe I asked her to teach me, I can't remember. But I do remember the first thing I ever sewed, I still have it, although I might have packed it away. It's a summer, it's a, it's a polka dot dress. Let me see if, I, if, if it's handy. No, it's, it's, it's being packed away for the, it's, it's a summer dress. Anyway, that was the first thing I made. I, I believe I was 15 years old. <sighs> and I think that it was a few years before I could actually have the confidence to put a zipper in myself. I would just always ask my mum to do it. And she and I would go and pick fabric together and find patterns together at Lincraft. We were Lincraft people. It doesn't exist anymore in Sydney. She taught me, she taught me most things and got me started. 
piece I'm most proud of. I think it's got to be my graduation dress. It's one of the things that I really feel like my sewing skills have come a long way in the last year or so and also my confidence with kind of hacking stuff together and self-drafting. So that's a real demonstration of all of those skills that I've been developing over the last little while. And I feel like I wouldn't have developed that if not for trying to experiment with stuff on YouTube. So yeah, that's probably what I'm most proud of. I'm really proud of my quilted jacket. That is another thing that I had a vision in my head, just like my graduation dress and it came to life fully how I had imagined it. And I'm just really proud of the effort that I put into it. This is back to Instagram. Eva Buck asks, what is your most worn item you made yourself? Probably recently my quilted jacket. I've been wearing the absolute crap out of that thing, which is really excellent because I've just been thinking about it for so long, but I am gonna dive into my A Closet app where I have logged pretty much everything in my wardrobe and I'm gonna see, you can go in and you can see which things you've worn the most. So it really depends on the season, but I do wear, at the moment I do wear my quilted jacket a lot. The other thing that I wear a lot of is a dress, the self-drafted dress. This dress. I call it my speed stripe dress because obviously it's got speed stripes. Um, I made this a couple of years ago. It was like the first thing I copied from another item of clothing that I had, uh, inspired by my friend Lauren. She came over for a sewing day and we sewed together and I made this. And I wear this a lot because it is a like a scuba knit and the style and both the fabric, I can wear it in summer and I can wear it in winter and I can wear it in all the between, in between side, um, times. So that's probably another thing that I wear a lot. <sighs> Gotta drink my tea before it gets cold. Okay, these are some questions, a couple of questions from my friend Pete. Hey Pete, another big fan of the channel. Thank you so much for watching. So Chloe, the girl I messaged before, Pete and Chloe used to be housemates. That's how I know Pete. I love these people. They're great. Get, get some people like Pete and Chloe in your life. They're just amazing. Anyway, Pete asks, what are your sewing desk design tips? Any must haves, don't do's. Thanks. And I think I know why he's asking me this. I'm just gonna shop that curtain again. So Pete runs a reclaimed timber shop here in Sydney in Marrickville called Among the Trees or Amongst the Trees. I think it's Among the Trees. I don't know, I'll insert it here. He works, he, he helps run that shop and it's amazing. Oh, I just almost spilled my tea, whoops. He, I think he might, he, maybe he's gonna be building himself a sewing desk. A couple of things that I wish I had the space for is having a separate big cutting table and a separate sewing bench. When I was younger and I was sewing with my mum, we would always set up everything on the kitchen table. At one end of the table, we'd have the sewing machine and at the other end of the table, we'd have the overlocker. And then we'd do all the cutting out in the middle. That's how I set up all of my stuff all the time when I was like sewing for myself. Recently, I've moved my desk from where it was by the window to next to like the weird cupboard that we have in our place. What I've noticed from watching other Instagram people, YouTube people, is that they set up their machines, their sewing machine and their overlocker side by side. And I love that. I've started doing that. And all you do is you kind of just like push one back and pull the other one over. Or if you had a long enough bench where you could like s slide on a rolly chair from the sewing machine position to the overlock position and back again, that'd be really handy. And I think that having enough space like next to the sewing machine to be able to just do whatever trimming, cutting would be amazing. In my future, I really want to have a cutting table with like a self-healing mat like built into it or the kind of top that you get at like architecture school where they expect people to be cutting models and stuff. And so that kind of, that surface that you could just get your rotary cutter out and just like zoom, zoom straight away around, you wouldn't need to worry about setting up any other mats. That would be, a definite, definite must have. <sighs> Doing a lot of talking and not a lot of breathing. The other must have, one day I really wanna have one of those industrial sewing machines where the whole bench and the sewing machine is just like built in. I think that would be really cool, but that's, that's further down the track in dream world where I have enough space for my own studio. Don't do's, what's a don't do? <sighs> I'd say, also, my desk is a sit-to-stand desk, so it's adjustable height, which I really like, because sometimes 
I get a bit of a sore neck if my machine is too high, like at a kitchen table or something. So it's good to have it a little lower. And then if you need to bring it up while you're doing something with your hands, then that can work also pretty well. So it must have very stable, strong legs because when the machine gets going, sometimes the table starts to like bounce up and down, which is a bit annoying. Does that answer your question, Pete? I hope so. He had, he had two questions and I think that this question is also very important. Or, and also, he says, what are the sewing tools and gadgets you use the most? I hate to say it, but I use my unpicker probably the most. <laughs> if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I'm very impatient and that I make a lot of mistakes. And I think having a good unpicker at the ready is very, very important. <laughs> Also, I didn't know what I was missing in my life until I got a wrist pin cushion. <laughs> and anything else that I find very handy? Oh, my little magnets. They're also really good. And I think just a really good pair of scissors is, is, is really important to be able to cut out all kinds of fabric. Okay, moving on. Someone said that I don't sound 100% Australian. Well, I am 100% Australian. This is what Australians sound like. Do -do -do -do. What is your degree? Master of Architecture. Why do you shop in your underwear? Um, I feel like this is related to when I am at Ikea in my graduation dress video. Uh, I am I am not in my underwear, I'm in my active wear. And I had just left yoga. And I feel like that's appropriate. It was also kind of summery that day. So I can wear whatever I want, wherever I want. Why are you walking around in gym attire when out shopping? Wear the clothes you make and wear gym clothes to the gym. If going shopping after gym, put something over it. Women must get past this gross practice of wear gym clothes out. Uh, I'm gonna do whatever I want, thank you. La Poppy 4801 asked me on my lessons from design school that apply to everyday life. They ask, what did you do before architecture? Before architecture, I worked for the government in Canberra. I worked for defense. I have a degree in international relations, which is kind of what Australians call political science. Uh, I studied, I wrote my thesis on like the Australian defense strategy and yeah, that's what I did before. <laughs> it was interesting, but not a long-term life for me. I could just, I couldn't see myself pursuing that forever. There are some more questions on Not Gonna Lie, so let's go back to that app. Do you want to start your fashion brand professionally or it's just a hobby? For now, it's definitely just a hobby. I don't see this being my whole life at the moment. Uh, I just finished my Masters of Architecture and I really, I'm passionate about architecture and I wanna have a career in that if I can. Well, I feel like that's up to me to make that happen. I also, though, re um, reserve the right to change my mind about that. I feel like at the moment, the things that I'm making are really just for myself and I don't know how I would cope with the stress and extra pressure of having a brand and trying to convince people that it's worthwhile to buy. I am not a trendy person. I do not ever really subscribe to trends. I don't really understand why they're a thing. And so I feel like because of that perspective that I have, yeah, I just, I don't think that it would be a good fit for me. And I think that right now I need to consolidate on where my life is at and the goal that I've worked towards to get to this point and getting a really good job in architecture that I really love. Maybe down the line, I might do something more with fashion, but at the moment it's definitely still just a hobby. More cake, more energy. She is beauty, she is grace. Footy starts in 20 minutes, so you've got me for another 20 minutes. Where is your new job at? It is at an architecture firm in Sydney. I don't really want to give any more information away because I want to keep that part of my life broadly for myself, but also privacy and stuff, <laughs> you know? All right, next message. Are you happy to work in architecture? Right now, yeah, I am. Uh, if you'd asked me that a month ago or two months ago, I would have had a different answer for you. My previous job was not the best fit in terms of workplace and I think that that happens a lot in architecture. I have found a job that I'm really 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 enjoying. I've been there for almost a month now and I love it. it goes to show that it's important to work towards what supports you in your life rather than trying to force it. Hi just a comment you should start an Etsy shop. Um no thanks <laughs> is what I'm gonna say to that. I've had a couple of people mention that I should start an Etsy shop. I don't know what I would sell in my Etsy shop. 
um, I have a full-time job and then I do YouTube for fun and honestly it takes up quite a lot of time. The things that I make, I make because I want to wear them. Throwing in someone else's perspective and making stuff to like be sellable to other people, that's just like a level of pressure that I don't want to have. That's pretty much all of the not gonna lie questions. There is one which isn't a question and I did open this when I got it and I've been thinking about this ever since and all it says is okay okay are we really gonna go there coming let's talk I would love to give you a straight answer I would love to tell you that I have strong pro-palestinian feelings I would love to tell you that Israel is in the wrong. I would love to tell you that it's that simple, but it's not. Right now, I feel like it's very fashionable and it's a moment in time where a lot of young people who might be discovering a bit of like a socialist leftist ideology for the first time are really adopting this pro-Palestinian stance. I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea here, but I do want people to acknowledge that what's happening in Israel and Palestine right now is the product of highly complex relationships and issues that have been going on for decades and even longer than that. What I'm gonna say in this Q&A is not gonna solve the world's problems and I know that I'm gonna open a kettle of fish. A kettle of fish? I know that I'm open, gonna open a can of worms by having any sort of perspective on this. Anything that I say I know is not gonna be good enough for however, whatever views you hold. What I will say is that no, I don't think that what Israel is doing in Gaza is right. I don't think that most Israelis think it's right. I don't think most Jewish people think it's right. Unfortunately, this is not a conflict between Israel and Palestine. This is a conflict between Israel and Hamas. Hamas being a terrorist organization who have infiltrated the leadership structure of Palestine and Gaza. Incredibly unfortunate. What's happening in Israel and Palestine right now has set us back in terms of finding a way forward to peace and the ability for these peoples to be able to exist in or close to what they perceive to be their homelands. It's set us back probably even further back before all of this even started, unfortunately. No, no one should be bombing any people. No one should be seeking to destroy a whole people and Israel is definitely in the wrong for having that approach. Unfortunately it's too hard for me to solve. My view is my view and I don't expect everyone to understand it. Also I used to work in sort of this field and I studied a lot to do with this sort of stuff and when I left that world it's probably shameful to say, but I did switch off a bit of my brain from all of that because frankly, I get you get to a point where it just becomes a bit too much and a bit too much to kind of process. I basically stopped reading the news after I left Defence because what is this 34 year old Australian person on the other side of the world? What impact is my thoughts gonna have? Yes, I stay informed, but I feel like there's a lot of pressure now to be one way or the other and it's definitely not as clear-cut as that and that's where I'm going to leave that, that question slash statement. I know that that answer is probably a bit undercooked for a lot of you but please respect my perspective and my decision not to share that more broadly because it is far more nuanced than I can express right now. Okay I'm gonna google like top 10 Q and A, hundred getting to know you questions. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, this is fun. I'm gonna pick some from this list. Who is your hero? I don't have one. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? Underwater. <laughs> what is your biggest fear? Incompetence. What really makes you angry? Public clocks that are incorrect. That's a, yeah, that just, that, that angers me. What motivates you to work hard? Incompetence. What is your favorite thing about your career? Two things, that I enjoy it. And the other thing is that 
I get to do something that comes like quite naturally and is enjoyable to me that helps other people. What is your proudest accomplishment? Probably my Master of Architecture. What is your favourite book to read? A good one. What makes you laugh the most? When people take something too seriously. What did you want to be when you were small? I wanted to be bigger. I wanted to be a ballerina. If you could choose anything to do for a day, what would it be? So, <laughs> would you rather ride a bike, ride a horse, or drive a car? Ride a horse. What would you sing at karaoke night? Something obscure. Something really obscure. What two radio stations do you listen to in the car the most? Triple J, WSFM. If you could eat only one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? A bowl of rice. Do you, dis do you like or dislike surprises? Why, why not? I dislike surprises because I feel like people who set up surprises have expectations about how you're gonna react and they expect you to enjoy it and like it. And as an autistic person who likes routine and likes to have an idea of what's coming, Surprises throw me off a little bit and it's just an uncomfortable time. Would you rather win the lottery or work at the perfect job and why? Win the lottery, duh. More time for sewing. Who would you want to be stranded with on a deserted island? Uh, my husband. <laughs> if money was no object, what would you do all day? Sew? Travel? I'd probably just travel everywhere I could, everywhere I could possibly go. If you could go back in time, what year would you travel to? 2012. <laughs> It was a good time. What is the best gift you have been given? The gift of life. What is the worst gift you have received? The gift of life. There's two pet peeves. Um, people who walk slowly. People who don't keep left. Where do you see yourself in five years? I don't. I cannot see in the future. What's your favorite zoo animal? Um, um, I don't know, I can't pick. There's too many good ones. Have you ever had a secret admirer? I don't know. How would I know? It's secret. What's the most daring thing you've ever done? Quit my cushy public service job to go back to uni? What was the last book you read? I read Killing for Country by David Ma and it was really good. Highly recommend. Are you a clean or messy person? Extremely messy. Do not be fooled by what you see because all of the mess is out of frame. Who would you want to play you in a movie of your life? Me. Obviously, I could act that out. Do you love or hate roller coasters? Love them. What's your favorite family tradition? Um, sledging. <laughs> Is your glass half full or half empty? These days half full. Used to be very half empty, but I switched my life. I changed my life around. Related or distantly related to anyone famous? Apparently, the reason that my family has this signet ring is because we're like some Bastard child of a royal somewhere, according to my nana. On a scale of one to ten, how funny would you say you are? I would say most of the time I'm about a three, and then occasionally I have moments of being like a nine or a ten. How many languages do you speak? I speak one natively, English, and I speak enough Japanese to get around Japan, and I speak a little bit of Spanish. What is one thing you will never do again? Doubt myself. Who knows you the best? My husband. Well, that's really fun. Um, thanks for being here. I hope those questions were fun. I really appreciate all the comments that you guys leave. Although if you have opinions and you have thoughts that are kind of like, you know that saying, um, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Please start to adopt that and take that into consideration when you're leaving comments on people's YouTube videos. I literally do read every single one of them and I try and reply to most of them and the ones that are a bit mean or a bit harsh, they do stay with you more than the nice ones, which is kind of crazy and it is a bit of bias, I guess, than what the human brain does. But um, yeah, please just bear that in mind. Thank you for being here and sticking around. I never know how to wrap up. I'm gonna go watch the footy now. See you next time.